All right. Well, hopefully you can still hear me. All right, we're, uh, we're moving right along. I still haven't quit smoking yet, but uh, I have learned to use the e-cig when I'm in the office. But uh, we have a lot to get to. And I'm finding that these progressive lenses can be a real pain in the butt when you're looking at a computer screen and trying to read from a book at the same time. Uh, I think the reading glasses may uh, be the uh, my best bet and use the progressive lenses for everything else. But as, you, as anything else, I'm getting uh, acclimated to the front and back clipping planes. So let's just move on. We got a lot to do. Using additional roof tools, soffit, fascia, and gutter. Now let me just get back to Revit and double check, make sure this is uh, recording. Yeah, we're good. All right, so we have this simple, uh, simple shape here, this little um, building, if you will. Let me get rid of that pitched roof. Put this back on the wireframe. All right, so we have this roof, uh, or I should say we have this, uh, this, this series of walls. Let's just make a roof out of this. So let's uh, roof by footprint, level two, and just select the walls. Make sure it's on the outer side. Hit OK. Attach. So now you have this simple roof. If you look at it uh, from the front, you can see a simple pitched roof. OK, so um, the following three roof tools can be found under the roof flyout. If you look under here at the bottom, we have roof soffit. And we'll watch. Creates a roof soffit in the building model. To create a roof soffit, open a plan view. To create a soffit that is associated with walls and roofs, use the pick roof edges and pick walls tools. To create a non-associative soffit, use the line tools. To create a sloping soffit, use the slope arrow tool. So we're not going to get into all that, but um, if we do select a soffit, um, well, before we do that, let's get a section going. Let's get a, uh, let's get a section going so we can see this in in real time. So let's get it over here. Bring this like that. Go to view. ZA. Oh, the uh, shortcut key. It's WT. WT for tile reviews. ZA. All right, so we have our section, as you can see. Uh, and the walls do extend up to the roof. Now, in floor plan, if we go to architecture and we go to roof and we go to soffit, uh, create on level two, right? We can create a level for that if we want. Now, you have an option to say pick roof edges, edge sketch lines based on existing roof edges. If you want to create a soffit from a two loop sketch between a wall and a roof, use this tool to select the roof edges. Then use the pick walls tool to select the walls. The resulting soffit is associated with the walls and the roof. To create non-associative soffits, use the line tool. Then let's pick walls. Edge sketch lines based on existing walls. Sketch lines created using this tool automatically constrains the walls. That's probably probably our best bet. Select a chain of walls, move the cursor over the wall, press tab to highlight the entire chain, and press and then click. So highlight over, hit tab, and then hit click. And then you can see we have some options here. Room bounding, offset from level, offset. Now, extend into wall core. So we're going to explore these different options. Let's just zoom in here. And you can see the soffit. Let's get it on the outside. Let's hit OK. Now, if you look, we've created the soffit. And there is no offset from level. And there is no offset left and right. And we can't change that right now. So if we go to level 2, and if we were to select the soffit, um, then we could change its, 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 our, its uh, offset and its slope in the process of creating it. So let's just take a look at it real quick. In, uh, like I said, in, in section, we close this uh, level. And you can see by selecting, you can actually bring it down with the arrow tools, but you can't bring it left and right. That's being controlled by the offset. Um, as you can see, height offsets from level, it's in the negative direction. Now it's in the positive direction. 
Now, I only show you that because if I select the roof and we change this to a two cut square, well, now you'll start to see that uh, with these variables, you can start to get a better idea of uh, the kind of roof that you're going to be creating. And there are some, uh, some parameters that we're going to have to keep in mind. All right, so that's the soffit. Now, this roof does an overhang, right? So why don't we, let's get, let's edit this roof and get an overhang. Let's hit tab. And you see overhang. Let's give this a, a, a 12 inch overhang. And let's say, okay. Let's go to our section now. Well, now the soffit doesn't extend out towards the overhang of the roof. So then why don't we go and edit the boundary of the soffit. We can go to level two for that. And if we select the soffit line, give an offset of 12 inches. Hit apply, go to our section. And now you can see the soffit is extended out underneath the offset or the cantilever of the roof. Could very well be that there's going to be lighting under this soffit. Air vents, the roof can uh, breathe through uh, ventilation pockets in the soffit. Some soffits are plenum. All right, so not to get all into that, let's move on to the next tool. So roof uh, fascia. So now, if you look at the, the status bar, click on edge of roof, soffit, fascia, or model line to add. Click again to remove. Well, let's go into the, uh, the level two and invoke the command again, a fascia. Now, it's saying, click on edge of roof. Well, oop, I'm out of the command again. Like you see, you can pick edge. Uh, come on. That one's not giving it to me. Hold on. Hold that thought. Give it to me a 3D view. Level 2. It's your proof. Okay, well, we could do it in the 3D view. Well, well that's the, that's the uh, soffit. Well, there's the, uh, the roof. And we're not in the command still. Well, there's the edge of the roof, right? There's the edge of the roof. And you got to be careful where you pick. So let's pick hold tab and click there and go to section. And as you can see, we picked the wrong edge. The fascia is actually on the face of the, on, on this face. So let's go back to roof. We just did this, fascia. And we just select the roof. No, hold on, hold on. It's making a liar out of me. Vertical offset, vertical profile offset zero. It's a one by 12. And I'm pretty sure I can, select, I can select it here. Okay, roof, let's try it again. Fascia, ah, there we go. Well, if I hold it here, I think I got it that time, I think. No, I didn't. I got it, in, let me start fascia. I got it slanted on 90 degrees. Now, angle zero. Yeah, I didn't have to do this last time. I didn't have to uh, change the angle of it. What if I put it on the soffit, let's see. Let's try it again. Section. 
Well, there it is on the edge of the soffit. Now again, I can move it up and it's vertical profile offset. It's one foot two from its, its location point. So one foot two, if you take a look, if we annotate that, Well, there's one foot six. So if we annotate that, that's 12. Close. So it's one foot two from the top of the soffit to the underside of the ridge joist, the ridge board, the rafter. All right, so as you can see, that is starting to take shape. We have and it's constrained, if you look, it's constrained to the soffit. If I move the soffit, I move the fascia. Okay, so, and if you can see the horizontal profile, there's nothing to say we can't put this in a, a negative three inch direction, and you'll see it'll go towards the core of the wall, right? All right, so just th these are some of the tools, <laughs> and we're almost through. Uh, we have to do the gutter now. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just grab this whole fascia if I can and delete it for a second. Okay, so now we have the architectural roof gutter tool. Now if we go to level two, it's looking to select an edge, and I want to do a view, WT, ZA. Now let's take a look. Here's our section, and we're still in the, uh, the gutter tool. And if I was just to hit tab, select that, well, there's a gutter, but it's, it's flipped inwards. Well, there it is, and it's to the edge of the ridge board, or the rafter. So, as you can see, Oop, I haven't finished it yet. No, I, I finished it. Okay, so again, I'm not going to get into every bell and whistle, every exercise, or we'll, um, we'll, we'll definitely go off on a tangent. So uh, those are the three uh, additional uh, roof tools that we could use. And each one of the tools, they say, behaves in a similar fashion. It uses a profile that is swept along the edge of the roof. The difference between these tools is fairly simple. A soffit tool will sweep a profile to the underside of a roof overhang parallel to the ground. The facial tool, the facial tool will sweep a profile along the vertical face of the roof edge, and the gutter tool will sweep a profile along one of the edges of the roof. Try these tools on the roof you created in this chapter to better understand how they react to roof conditions. You can see how the gutter tool looks using the default profile in figure 14.40. So, do not feel you are limited to residential uses with these tools. For example, the gutter tool can be used to create a break metal cap for a flat roof parapet. Do be careful when you are picking an edge to apply the gutter tool. The best approach is to pick in plan views because the gutter tool will determine to, will default to the lower of the two edges. So your gutters will all be placed at a consistent level, default to the lower edge that you pick. The first selection determines the location additional segments can be added. All right, so that's a quick overview. You can practice that, and there's a ton of videos out there that will allow you to apply fascias, gutters, and soffits. And the more we get into detailing and annotation and call-out views, we're going to see how this is going to be important because we're going to have to uh, create details of all these locations. And a lot of these uh, interlocking sandwich pockets, for lack of a better term, um, are pretty detailed and they're made up of complex systems with complex layers and you're going to probably be working with a manufacturer and you'll be working with materials and uh, methods of, of, of installations that you're going to have to look at and then get it on paper um, and then call a detail out to that location. How detailed you can get in the model is just going to help you down the road. Uh, if, if you can get this as detailed as you can, and remember, this is just a generic wall, right? This is just a generic wall. Um, these, these, uh, 
these details can be pretty, uh, if you remember, they can be pretty, um, pretty detailed, <laughs> I guess, you know, and, and again, you gotta remember the floors, the layers, the roofs, they all have, they all have assemblies that are made up of multiple layers, right? So again, if we added all sorts of thicknesses and different layers, we could see how we could start to tie these roofs and these, um, these intersection points. We'll start to tie in together. And then that, just, that cut hierarchy is going to play a huge part, right? That cut hierarchy is going to play a huge part. Because, again, how things wrap and how they sweep and all that, just like we discussed when we were creating the walls. It's going to be important. So um, we have the capability of editing each of those systems assembled, wall, floor, roof. I'm going, to, I'm going to stop it there. That's a pretty good overview, um, and we could spend we could spend months on this, on on just studying different roof ty roof types and and creating different uh, section views and detail callouts, and we're gonna we're gonna this is what uh, what the job entails. Um, however, uh, we got to get to the MEP. A lot of HVAC folks out there, a lot of electrical folks, a lot of plumbers. A lot of security, telecom, telephone, CATV. Um, you know, so there's so many, so many folks that uh, that can utilize this software. Because everyone wants to see what it's going to look like down the road. Let me see a drawing. I want to see a drawing. I want to see a drawing. All right, so let's just stop it there, and we're going to continue on with dormers. We're going to move on to dormers. Those are pretty interesting.